None of my bills. He had a, a blade. He was swinging on me. This one knocked me down. He wants us to go. He has to evict us. No, I am evicting you. I am evicting you. This is Judy Justice. Denise and Deborah Carter are suing their former landlord, Charles Ashley, for sabotaging their business, vet bills, and an assault. Court coming to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2036, Carter versus Ashley. Thank you. You're welcome. Your sisters, is that correct? Yes. You decided, according to your complaint, to go into a business, some sort of a doggy daycare. In what month and year did you decide to go into that business? This year, two months ago, uh, May. Do you have any dogs of your own? Yes. How many? I have a poodle and two pits. And you? I have four pit bulls. Did they all live in your home? Um, they did, yes. They did? Yes. The two of you decided to go into this alleged business and needed some space, according to you, and went to the defendant who was renting a house. Is that right, Mr. Ashley? No, it's not a house. What is it? It's a building. What kind of building? It's a commercial building. Okay. On this commercial building lot, there's a backyard or a back... Y yes. ...empty space, and it's an open space with a fence. Yes. So it's not a home. No. What arrangements did you make with the Carter sisters to rent them that space? I made arrangement with Deborah Carter. May I see? Deborah Carter. Correct. That's you. Yes. When, for the first time, did you meet Deborah? I think it was around the 4th of June. And she wanted to bring some dogs onto your property. Correct. How many dogs did she want to bring on your property? She didn't tell me. She told me she was had a kennel. And when I got there and she had the dogs there in two cages, it was seven dogs, seven pit bulls. In cages? And they, yes, and they're there today. They're still there? Yes. May I see them, please? I don't have them. And, uh, I didn't know what to get together. Okay. I'd like to see what pictures you have, sir. Yeah. This is the 30-day notice that I've given them, and those are the pictures where she damaged... Miss Carter... Sometime after June of this year, did you place dogs in this fenced-in open space in cages? Yes. Loud. You hear the way I'm talking? Yes. And how many dogs did you place in the cages? At that time, it was seven. Seven adult dogs? No. There's three adults and four puppies. So five. How old were the puppies? They were... Six months, five or six months. Who did the dogs belong to? Me. So all those dogs... Well... Judge, uh, let's get it right the first time. This is not going to get easier. This is going to get harder, Miss Carter. So the seven dogs that you... Stop playing with your papers. The seven dogs that you placed in the cages were your dogs. Mine's my sister's and the, um, some, and other friend. Another... How many were yours? You had four pit bulls. Mm -hmm. Were your four pit bulls there? Uh, yes. Yes, that's a yes, so you're four. Your sister has two pit bulls. Were her... Look at me. Your sister has two pit bulls. Were her two pit bulls there? Yes. So that's six. And somebody else had one. Mm -hmm. Who was the person who had one? They're not here. It's a friend. We were watching their dog. They're, they they okay, have a so dog. Okay, so you put your four pit bulls, your sister's two pit bulls, and a friend's pit bull in two cages? No. How many cages? There are four cages, but... Oh, uh... Okay. I'd like to see pictures of the here four cages. There you go. And that's just to separate them. Your Honor, when she... By six. Shh. Just a second. Prior to meeting the defendant, where did you keep your four pit bulls? In the yard at my home. Was it in the backyard that you kept, kept the four pit bulls? Yeah, they had space in the backyard, but they stayed in the house. And then when it's time to do that thing, they go outside. They stayed in the house in the living room. So they were house dogs? Yes. And what about your two pit bulls? I stayed in the front, in the front house. They stayed in the house with me. On what date did you bring your pit bulls to the yard? June, June 4th? June 6th. Six, six. And you paid him for a month. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. How much did you pay him for the month? 
500. And the three puppies that were six months old, what did you intend to do with those? Um, we had people that wanted them. We were supposed but to But there's a second. Were they yours or hers? Who did the three puppies belong to? Me. They belong to you. Uh -huh. So don't speak for her. Okay. Good. I've been speaking That's for just all my a life. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you've been doing all <sighs> your life. Right now, I'm getting answers to someone who may or may not be swift enough or savvy enough not to tell me the truth. Did you ever have more than seven dogs in the yard? No. Okay. So this is what I'm sort of confused about. Of the seven dogs that you kept in his yard, six of them were pit bulls that belonged to you. And what you're suing him for is you say, because of him, you lost your kennel business where you want, well, that's what it says here. You lost your kennel business. Daycare. What? It's, it's a, a daycare. dog daycare. It's a daycare. There's no dog daycare. There were your dogs. No, we were supposed to be inside. We were only supposed to be outside for a week. The business is a business, like he said. It has a storefront. It has a middle section. The storefront is where we take the small dogs. When you come in, we'll be, greet you, assess it, bring in the small dogs. If you have bigger dogs, he has a middle section. We were supposed to split the building in half. And he never split. He never, he never cleaned the inside of the building. We had to go in there, power wash it ourselves. We bought our own paint. We were only supposed to be outside for two weeks until his people cleaned the inside for us. Okay. Is that what you were supposed to do? No, Your Honor. They are lying. <laughs> uh, okay. The building was a motorcycle shop. They ain't brought That's no paint. They ain't cleaned nothing in it. It's still not clean. Okay. And Were they they, just they a didn't second. have no money. Just a second. How much in total did they give you for rent? Five hundred dollars. Is that correct? Yes. For the first just, just a second. Did you give them any more than five hundred dollars? No. Did you have any other dogs other than your six dogs and somebody else's one pit bull? Ever on the premises? No. No, don't speak. I'm speaking to her. So whatever business you are, your investment in this business was $500? No. I worked for him May 25th to June 1st. I cleaned out 25 refrigerators. Um, I don't care. That's not in here. That so was a pay Yes, it is. Uh, I, uh, she ain't worked for me. Yes, uh, she, just yes, a second. I, I sent it to you guys. Just a second. Miss Carter, there is absolutely... Nothing here that says that you worked for him and he owes you for that. Well... Let me tell you what your complaint states. Your complaint says money owed for sabotaging a business, vet bills because one of your dogs was injured, and I'm not saying actual you. imputative damages for assault. That's what you're claiming. I'm just saying that I cleaned those appliances. I he don't. said that that was a payment for rent. So that was for the second month of rent. She it was lying, $500. Just a second. He was supposed to pay me every day, but I just told him to put I it don't. towards the rent. Okay. And that's what we agreed to. Uh, okay. So the first month and the second month was paid for. Listen to me. My question is simple. Yes. And it, Sorry. there's only one attitude here, madam. Stand up. Are your dogs still there? Some of them. Get them off his property. Why is it's that? It's over. Property. Very easy. You want to keep dogs in a cage like this? I can't control that. I am certainly not putting a judicial imprimatur on keeping dogs, and I don't care what breed they are, in cages in a backyard. So I... what I'm telling you this is you have 24 hours to get your dogs off that property. Get them off. He's going to get an order from a marshal. And if your dogs aren't off that property, they're going to the pound. So Do you is understand? That, why is that? Well, I want you to I... understand. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand my order, because now we're in August. You started this whole process in June. I'm finishing it before it gets too mucky. Get your dogs off the property. We understand each other? Why is that? Why? why? What did we do? Uh, we paid? We like did? No, no, no. You paid good. him for one month in June. Mm -hmm. but we you paid it. him oh. you paid him in one month in June. We are now in August. This is a marriage that's not going to go well. Get your dogs off his property. And then you don't have to deal it's with them anymore. Do you understand? It's not his property. Do you, un do you understand? It's not his no, property. Do you un no. understand. You you're, you're, then you're, if it's not, not his property. property, then what are you suing him for? Suing because he's the one who stabbed me. Oh, just and a second. The one who just a second. So if we're eliminating money owed for sabotaging a business, and if you're suing him for assault, then I'll hear your assault. Then I don't have to hear 
any of the things about the dogs. So all I'm going to hear about is the assault. Tell me what happened. You were assaulted. That's what you want to tell me. Yes, July 5th, we had came. My witness, if she could speak, she had a uh, certain... No, she wasn't assaulted, right? Yes. OK. She Who... was assaulted first, actually. She's the first one he swung on. OK. Step up. July 5th, your name is what? Priscilla Walker. You don't own any of these dogs, do you? No, ma'am. What were you doing on the property on the 5th of July? Um, I, I sometimes go and help them with the dogs, clean up and feed the dogs. And those dogs that were there, they were there for at least a month from June 4th to July 5th. Correct. There are six pit bulls. Correct. Nice. Right? They got up. That used to be, according to them, in the backyard or in their homes, right? Correct. OK. Now. Priscilla, I want you to look at me, and they're your friends, right? So you went over to help them. Yes. I want you to tell me what it is that caused them to take these house dogs, dogs that were in their homes and in their backyard, if they had to relieve themselves, don't speak, and move them into cages in a backyard in a commercial building. I want you to tell me that. Um, your Honor, that wasn't the intent. They moved the dogs for a bigger space because they're entrepreneurs and they wanted to start a business. Just a second. It's not their business. Business is starting a business with somebody else's dogs, not your dogs. They wanted to start a doggy, uncross your arms. They wanted to start, a do according to them, a doggy daycare. Mm -hmm. That I understand. But you don't start a doggy daycare by taking your dogs that are house dogs and putting them in cages in somebody else's backyard. Why not? Or yeah. somebody else's space. We'll Your Honor, that. that's not necessarily right, true. So. We're millennials. When you're boosting a business, you want to use your yourself and what you have as, as advertisement. And that's what they did. So the other dog that they did have was a friend, and the, the friend was actually paying for that dog to stay there. So it did deem it a business at that time. You still haven't answered my question as to why their six pit bulls were in cages when they were formerly house dogs well, for a month. Your Honor, the gentleman over here to my left did not allow them permit. They, they didn't have access to what they paid for. Just a second. Are you telling me that for a month they didn't have access for the dog? You just told me that you would go there and help them clean up. To the inside of the building that was promised I'm not them? talking about the inside of the building. OK. And pay clear. We have the whole yard. We have the whole pay yard. Pay careful yard yard inside, yard inside the building. So They're not hearing all happening. of you, and you're not answering my question. The three of you went there for what purpose on July 5th? To feed and, and clean up after the dogs. How'd you spend the weekend with them? I was the I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> Denise and Deborah Carter claim their former landlord, Charles Ashley, broke an agreement to store their dogs. They also claim he assaulted them. Charles claims he was the one who was assaulted. OK, if I was starting a doggy daycare business and I had house dogs, my little shih tzus running around the house where they have been for years, I would not take them and put them in cages in a back vacant lot in order to demonstrate that I had a business. My dog I, slept just a in second. the house. They slept in the house. They didn't roam in like your little shih tzus. They didn't do that. Just Those a second. You told they, me that they, they stayed no, in I your house. They stayed in, I said they slept in the house, in and a cage, in an area. Cage yeah, well, that's what, exactly what I'm saying. I don't understand how you could take your pets. But they stayed outside. Because they we were offering other the things. We wanted to have one. All right, let's get to the assault. I'm not interested in, I'm not interested in this. Now. Your Honor. I have the lease here. I'm paying the owner $4,000 a month. He lied okay. to the loaner and said he wasn't going to do any subleasing. and he subleased The only thing us. I'm interested in right. is the... Us. The only thing I'm interested in is the assault. The so, owner... Priscilla, yeah. don't speak. The three of you went there for what purpose on July 5th? To feed and, and clean up after the dogs. OK. And you had done that before? Yes. And when you got there on July 5th, was that over a holiday weekend? Yes, it was. It was a Tuesday. It, it was, was, a, was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday, so July 4th was on a Monday. Yes. Had you spent the weekend with them? I you was the not speaking to you. <laughs> Had you spent the weekend with them? No. Yeah. OK, no. you say yes, she says no. I'm not asking you a question. Do you understand? So you spent One. July 4th. Go ahead. You spent <laughs> July 4th with them. Is no. either yes or no? No. When did you meet them on July 5th? 
In the, around the morning. Around the, what time? 11 a.m. Uh, you're asking me with a question. 11, 11? a.m. I don't know if it was 11, 11 I'm asking you. 11 a.m. Did you have a discussion with them? Regarding? Regarding the dogs, what you were gonna do that day. Of course, we always have discussions about what we're gonna do. Okay, the day. when you spoke to Deborah, did you ask her when she had last seen the dogs? Mm, no, I, no. No, you did not. Deborah, prior to July 5th, when had you last seen the dogs? July 4th. What time? It was about five o'clock. I was in there, cleaned them up. He came, locked me in for four hours. Okay, so on July 4th, you were in there feeding the dogs. Yeah. And July 5th, you went back in the morning again to feed the dogs. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh is not an answer. Yeah. Now, no. tell me what happened when you got there on July 5th. Um, on July 5th, when we went inside to feed the dogs, I went to go turn on the water hose and I noticed that the water would not come out. That's when they were in it, the kennels feeding the dogs and I told Carter that, hey, the water's not on. So the door to the building was open. Um, I believe they both stepped in. When they stepped in, there was like verbal altercation. So when they stepped in, you heard that there was someone else in the building? Yeah. Okay, and that would have been you, sir? Yes. On the 5th? Yes, me and okay. another friend of mine. Okay, and what were you doing in the building on July 5th? It was about 6 o'clock that evening. My friend came by the house. He's a general contractor, and I'm renovating the building to set it up for business. So I said, come on, let me take you up here, show you the building, I need your help. We get up there, I open the gate, go in, leave the gate unlocked, and we walk through the building. When I come around, they are in the building. All three of them or just one? All three of them. Had you turned the water off to the no. hose outside? No. Do you I used know? to water the dogs when they didn't come because they'd be barking so, and the neighbors next door, I just moved in, Your Honor. I don't want to make no enemies. That's why I told them I'm not taking no more rent from you. Get the dogs out. Okay. I tell them you trust fast. Just a second. So now? You went inside, or the Carter sisters went inside. Yeah, I said You that. heard some noise. Did you go into the building? Yes. Okay. And what happened when you went into the building? When I went into the building, he immediately got very frustrated and said, what are you guys doing here? Why are you here? You need to get off. Get off my property. Get off my property. They're like, we paid you. We have an agreement. And next thing you know, he pushed Deborah Carter. He pushed her. And then that's when Carter, Denise Carter, was got in the middle and said, no, you're not, don't put your hands on my sister. The situation ensued. The gentleman that was inside stopped everything and walked him out of the, out of the building. And as he's walking him out of the building and we're walking out behind him so that we can try to figure out what's going on with the water, he slams her foot in the door and tries to lock her in and pushes her. And that's when they started pushing on the door because at this point he's trying to lock them in. Lock them in the building? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When they actually, uh, the gentleman stopped him and the door opened, I seen what type of altercation it was. I didn't want anything to do with it. I'm like, I'm, Okay, I'm... so at that point, nobody was injured? No. Okay, so now you're outside. Now we're outside. Okay, and you're outside in the back, the back area, area where the dogs are. Correct. Tell me what happened next. So as we're walking, I'm, I'm walking fast because I noticed that he's walking fast. And I'm like, you're not about to lock me in here. You already just tried to lock them in there. I'm, you I'm, mean lock you in, in the, the, the in yard. yard? So you got out of the yard? Yes, he tried to close the, the yard gate on us, which is a really big, tall, black gate. And as soon as he tried to close it, it was uh, it just an altercation, a verbal altercation started. He didn't like what was said. I was on the left hand tell side. Tell me what you tell me what the altercation was. Everything was said about the business, you know, um, that they were gonna speak to the, the owner, that you know, he still owed them money if he wanted them to move out for the rest of the month, that he could just give them the money or whatever and, and they'll leave. It wasn't a problem. By the way, I am looking at your lease and you did lease the premises from June of 2022 to May 31st, 2025 at a monthly rent of $4,000. Are you still paying rent to the owner of the building? Yes, ma'am. You have to remove your dogs there. He's not, He's paying, not paying rent. rent. He, he has, has a, a he has an eviction he notice rent. too. He owes four thousand dollars. I have a picture of it. He's lying. He hasn't yes. paid rent. Proof when was nothing he hasn't paid rent true. this month or last month? He got the eviction last month on the eleventh. Okay. Right now, he has not been evicted from the property. Is that correct, or have you? Right. I just paid him yesterday. 
<laughs> Why did you say you didn't? Just a sec. Oh, I'm, I'm asking a simple question. I have before me, ladies, pay attention. I have before me a lease that gives him three quarters of the building and the backyard. Until he's evicted, until this lease is deemed void, you have to remove your dogs within 24 hours Why? of today. Why? I am evicting you with a marshal tomorrow. Yeah. Get your dogs out of there. He has medical records that he received five staples in the top of his head. And that's not something he did to himself. That happened. That's, your did that's you see the not yard? something he. No? Get up. Stand up. Did... Where do you think you are? Denise and Deborah Carter have accused their former landlord, Charles Ashley, of breaking their agreement and assaulting them. Charles claims Denise and Deborah attacked him first. Okay, we're gonna get back to this assault because I have other things to do today. You're outside. The gate that he's tried to crux has opened up again. Mm -hmm. And? He got really angry. He was saying a lot of curse words, you know, you need to remove all your, you know what, if you don't remove it, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna remove it for you type stuff. And after that, he swung with his right hand and it connected with my face. After that, he started punching on all of us, so we had to defend ourselves and fight back. And then an altercation got started, and everybody was fighting, fighting with everybody. Fighting so it with, was the yes. three of you and him. Yes. Okay. That's right. Did you go to a doctor? No, but I was. Did you, just a second. Did you take photographs of your face? No. What about you, Deborah? Hmm. Were you hit yes, by the I defendant? Was. Yes, I was. Where were you hit In by the my face? And my Did you... No, no pictures, and I didn't go to the doctor. I self-healed. Good. And what about you, Miss Carter? Where I had were to go you to hit? The doctor. Hmm? I had to go to the ER because I had to get stitches. I had nine stitches. Okay. And... Well, tell me about the stitches. That's what I want to know. How did the cut that required the stitches take place? Uh, when he was attacking us, he was swinging on me, um, and he had a, a blade in his hand. And I thought he was punching me, but really when I was that, blocking myself, he was, uh, he was taking. That was the second, the second occurrence, because after the first one, we tried to leave the situation. He was upset and put out a, a knife. We thought we were leaving, yeah. And he just knife. came back with the knife and I, and. Now I'd like to see the records. Uh, the, here's the knife records, and then here's the, um, police records on when he was arrested. And that's just, like, my stitches and what doctor I went to and, like, my medication. Okay. Now I'm going to take a look. Okay. Mr. Ashley, the only thing that I actually want to know about from you is there's no question in my mind that the plaintiff did not cut herself. No question. I want to know how she got cut. I don't know, Sir John. I didn't even have a wallet on me. Now, I'm 75 years old. I, I wouldn't even argue with her. I went to the back door, the gate, and they had a trash can where they had propped it open. So I went to move the trash can, and that's when this one hit me and knocked me down. And when I was coming up, Deborah hit me in the head with a tube of folk. And blood just went everywhere. Did you go to the doctor? Yes. I'd it's, like to see your report. It's in, it's in the record. You know, I have a video of what happened out there. Just saw yeah. this right now. Oh, I'd like to see it. Okay. Do you have it through the assault? I'm just interested in the yes. assault. It's, it's just the assault. Just the assault. Yeah, yeah it's just press I'd play like right here. Okay, if you press play, you'll see him slamming us out. I don't see any assault. Well, yeah, me. but I tell you, my phone fell out the hand. Well, that, uh, that then don't show me what I can't see. All I know is he has medical records that he received five staples in the top of his head on that date. And that's not something he did to himself. No. Get up, stand up. Did, he Where did do you do think that. you are? He, you think he did that to himself? Yes, do you He's... see the tire behind him? He just fell over it. That's exactly what happened. And all that happened. wood behind him, he, 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 he fell on that stuff. Listen to me, blunt head trauma which is what they the emergency, which is what the you emergency. Yourself you yourself down. Okay. You, you attacked us. You have, you're attacking us and pleasure. Okay. Listen to me, okay. listen to me carefully. Right. You have, now sit. You have 24 hours to get your dogs out of that yard. You want to show me pictures of a trash strewn yard? That's not where I would keep my precious house dogs that was that. for an hour. So get your dogs 
out of there 24 hours from today. How do I, I, th how do I no, that? No, 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 no. Just, just this is not a dance party. I'm ruling now. 24 hours, remove your dogs. You have nothing left to do with him. He wants you gone. I want you gone. I want those dogs out of the cages on that property, and I want them gone within 24 hours. Now, there's no question, Mr. Rashley, that both of you were injured in that altercation. No question. All I'm asking is, subsequent to your arrest, did you have a hearing? No, Your Honor, I have it right here. They rejected the case. The, May I uh, see it? They wouldn't even hear it. I sure. didn't... They rejected it. Did you have a hearing? They didn't tell me about anything. They didn't tell you about anything. Well, that's because they rejected the case. Okay, so I'm telling you, because I'm issuing an order, I'm giving it to you. You're the lawful tenant of the building. You can take it to a marshal, take it to the sheriff. Those dogs have to be out of there within 24 hours. We're done here. This court is adjourned. You know it is what it is. I thought it was a good decision. It was the truth. He has no consequences. It just is the reason why you don't believe in the judicial system. I'm not going to be renting out to them no more, and I'm not going to rent to nobody. I think that it's so cruel to keep seven dogs in small crates day, night. Especially in a commercial building, commercial open buildings. lot. People shouldn't have dogs that do that. There should be a license required to own a dog not necessarily to be a dog, <laughs> but to own another living creature. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of mind would think that it's fair to keep a living creature in a filthy, dusty, dusty, infested yard in crates for now three months. I don't know what kind of creature would... You're a wedding planner. Yes. And the police arrived at this wedding because you booked it at a venue that wasn't allowed to have a wedding. I told her to postpone her wedding. No, that's not what she hired you for. She hired you to plan her wedding. This is Judy Justice. Wedding planner Tara Gordon is suing her former clients, Beatrice Jackson and Nicholas Smith, for the balance of a wedding contract. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case number 2030, Gordon versus Jackson Smith. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Gordon, you're a wedding planner. Yes. You called her to plan a wedding that you were having in Las Vegas. Yes. It's your husband? Yes. The wedding was scheduled for what date? April 30th of 22. Your lawsuit against the defendants is for the balance of a fee that you say is due and owing to you. Miss Jackson and Mr. Smith are counterclaiming for a whole bunch of things. They said that not only didn't they get everything that they paid for, that you selected the venue and they were ejected from the venue because they weren't allowed to have a wedding there or serve liquor. So what was your fee that you quoted the defendants and how much of that fee did they pay? My fee for planning the wedding was $4,000. And that $4,000, was that fee reduced to a contract? Yes, it was. I'd like to see it. Okay. Ms. Jackson, this is your first wedding? Yes. And yours? Yes. Okay, your total fee was 4000 and a deposit of 2000 Did they give you a deposit? Yes. Okay, so they signed an agreement to pay you $4,000. How much did they pay you in total? In total, for our planning fee, they paid... No, in total, how much did they pay your company? $2,000. 2000 Correct. So how our company is set up is we're set up as an affordable payment plan for a wedding. So we set up our clients on a payment plan. So they also pay the expenses of all of their wedding through us. So you have to send them an invoice for what it was that you spent for the vendors. Correct. Okay. And then and also the default of that contract states that if they miss payments, they have breached the contract. That's why we're here. Each of you is accusing the other of breaching this agreement. You say that they didn't finish paying you what they owed you, and they say you didn't furnish the services to them that they signed up for for the wedding. They gave you $2,000, and the wedding was supposed to be held where? The banquet hall. Did you send them a deposit? No, because at that time, she had not paid enough money. Just a second. The answer is no. You had not sent them a deposit. No. Had they sent you the deposit of $2,000? They sent me the deposit for our planning fee, yes. I'm talking about for your planning fee, $2,000. Yes. yes. And how much was the deposit for... 50% of $16,000, which was $8,000. And where is the invoice 
for that, that you sent them? I don't have that invoice because she was not able to secure the venue. I read it. And from what I read in your complaint, the original venue that you secured, according to you, was rendered unavailable because of a broken pipe. That was the second venue. We went through three venues. The first venue, she lost that venue because she could not keep up with the payments and did not submit money for a deposit. The second venue was the R&R Event Center. That venue she lost because a pipe broke in the venue. Okay, and just, with a, just a second. R&R. Event Center. And when was that taken? That was booked on March 11th, 2022. And I do have the invoice for that. And how much was it? $2,250. Okay, that's much better than 8000 Okay. Did she put in a deposit? The deposit was made from the monthly payments that she makes towards her wedding. Show me invoices that you sent her every month. Yes, that you... I have that. Well, I'd like to see them. This is the statement of the account. It lists all the invoices that she was sent on a monthly basis. So she paid you the $20,000 that was invoiced. Her wedding cost a total of $23,000. No, no, that's not what I said. Not Opening balance was zero. Invoice $20,451.57. Paid $19,356.57. That's what this says. Uncross your arms. Correct. No, that's Okay, that's so correct. she paid for everything. Now. No, she didn't pay for everything because, as I just stated, her wedding cost a total of $23,651. No. Let's go back to, because I see that we're not getting anywhere. Before her wedding, before anything happened, before she said, I do, and before he says, I take you, she paid practically $20,000, which was your original estimate and her budget for the wedding. It, there's a second. That's either a yes or a no. Before the wedding, your original budget that you were given by the defendant, I read the papers, was $20,000. So, and as I... Mm -hmm. That's either a yes, I read the papers, or a no. Yes, that okay. is the budget she stated she would like to stay around. But, however, in planning a wedding, you cannot give an exact of how it's I didn't cost. say that. I so didn't... After Madam, when... pay careful attention to me. I've made 16 weddings. I've had 16 event planners. I know exactly how it works, and I know exactly that you can't always predict to the $100 or $50 or sometimes $500 how much more the wedding is going to cost. It never costs less. That's not what I said to you. I said by the time the wedding took place, she had paid the vast majority of the original amount that she said she wanted to spend for the wedding. And that is accurate. She Correct. said she wanted yes. to spend 20000 She gave you over 19000 Did that include your fee? No, it didn't. Oh, just a second. So the answer is no. That's what she wanted to spend exclusive of your fee. Correct. Now, of your fee, she gave you an initial deposit, or they did, of $2,000. So... That's yes. either a yes, yes. or a yes. no. She gave yes. you yes. $2,000. Did she ever pay you the other $2,000 no. for the fee? And the rest of the expenses that you want are the additional expenses over and above the $20,000 that... Stop shaking your head. Over and above what she originally said she wanted to spend. Correct. Now... I'm going to get to what happened just about a week before the wedding. Okay. You had booked a place. She had paid for the place, $2,250. Yes. And that was at R&R. &R. According to you, something happened at R&R. &R. Stop shaking your head. It's annoying. Something happened at R&R. &R. What happened at R&R &R and when? Correct. The wedding was scheduled to happen on April 30th. I just was in... tell me what happened at R&R. &R. I was informed by Rico, the owner, sitting on that side, that a pipe had busted and the venue would no longer be available for usage on her wedding date. And on what date was that? It was around the week before her wedding, or two weeks before her wedding, sorry. Date? I don't have the exact date. You own, manage, or what, this R&R? &R? I'm the owner of R&R &R Events. Okay, tell me your last name, sir. Cox, C-O-X. Do you remember having a conversation with the plaintiff about the venue? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember when it was? March 25th of 2022. Can you tell me what you said to her and what she said to you? We had a conversation. I'm like, hey, problem with my venue. I had a pipe that busted. I won't be able to host her wedding. Well, the reception, I should say. So I informed her. I can put her in contact with other venues that I may know 
or I could send her back the deposit. She asked for the deposit back. I sent the deposit back probably within the hour. How much was the deposit? $2,250? No, ma'am. How much was, was it? $1,125, which was half. So 50%? Yes, ma'am. So you sent her back the deposit? Yes, ma'am. Did you receive the deposit, Ms. Gordon? Yes, I did. The wedding wasn't until April 30th. So Correct. you had plenty of time, well, not plenty of time, you had time to look for a new venue or else which they would have did. to change the date. Correct, and they found Just it. Just shh. What venue, you can sit down, Mr. Cox, thank you very much. What venue did you select? And had you ever used them before? No, I had not. I never worked with a challenge budget like this for a venue. I, I, if you don't like the budget, don't take the gig. Yeah, cool. I won't. And that's where the reception was held. But that venue was not allowed to have this kind of party. I was I, not aware of that until the day of the wedding. That's your problem. Mm -hmm. That's not their problem. They hired you as an event planner. They did, They're and just they got a wedding. They... The wedding went the entire time. The wedding was not closed until after the wedding had already ended. So they used the venue regardless. Okay. Miss Gordon, mm -hmm. it's your job as the event planner, which is what I don't understand you being here. Mm -hmm. It's your job as the event planner. They don't live in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. That's your job to ensure that the place that you select is a venue that's capable of performing the duties that you outlined in your contract, which means they serve food, they're allowed to serve liquor, they're allowed to dance, they're allowed to host an event of how many people? It was supposed to be 120, but all of my guests didn't get their invitation, so. Okay, so over okay. 100 Actually, people. Your Honor, it wasn't that they were not allowed to have the wedding there. They were allowed to have the wedding there. What they were not allowed to do was the business was not allowed to operate after a certain time, and that is what the business owner produced to us. Just a second. You want to show me a contract that she signed have, with that yes. business owner? Miss Gordon. Yes, I do. Yeah, I would like to see the contract that you signed with this business owner. Sarah, just for my own information, would you look up this venue, yeah. please? Tell me what you find. Sure. Miss Gordon, this space was a little less money than the previous space that you had selected. Correct. $500, $700? Yes, and that's because they were not providing all of the things that the original event pl place was providing. Was this event space that you booked at the end of the evening, I don't want to use the word raided, closed by the police? That's either a yes, did the police arrive at this venue? Yes, they did. Okay. And what time did the police arrive at the venue? They arrived at 9.30. Is there a police report that anyone has? No. And how many parties have you done where police arrived at the end of an evening or during the course of an evening in the two years that you've been in Las Vegas? Never. And the police arrived at this wedding not because anybody was creating a disturbance, they weren't shots fired. Well, That's... no, that is, that is why. You may say, sir, I don't know anything about the venue, but that's your job. You're supposed to know about the venue. When I told her in the first place that she needed to postpone her wedding, that was my professional you mean that's, advice. You, no, no, that's not what she hired you for, to tell you to postpone her wedding. Wedding planner, Tara Gordon, claims her former clients, Beatrice Jackson and Nicholas Smith, owe for the balance of their wedding. Beatrice and Nicholas are countersuing for breach of contract. Okay, police arrived at this wedding not because anybody was creating a disturbance, there weren't shots fired. Well, That's... no, that is, that is why. They initially had a report because well, her... Well, I don't know that. If you can show it to me... I don't have... I'd be more than her. happy to look at it. The police showed up... May I bring my witness up, please? For what reason? Because she can attest to the altercation that took place prior, which is why we were even brought up on the radar, because the other businesses in the vicinity of where the business takes place had complained. There was a lot of altercation back and forth outside of the event, because she refused to sign the agreed-upon payment plan to continue payments after the wedding. You understand that I'm not particularly sympathetic. I'm not I'm, less, I'm letting you know I'm not particularly sympathetic for the following reason. Mm -hmm. Somebody plans a wedding and has a budget of $20,000 plus your fee, so that's, say, $25,000 that they either put together or are saving up for a wedding, first for each. A week before the wedding, something happens with the venue. 
where the wedding could not be held at the venue of their choice. They're relying on an out-of-state wedding planner. That's you to find a legitimate venue that is licensed to have an event. When they get to Las Vegas on, on the date of the wedding, you present them with a new contract. No, that is not true. That well, is when did you, you have it incorrect. When, just a second. When did you give them, because you said that the problem which caused the police to come... Too. Just a second. She, I don't understand. Before I selected the very last venue, she was on FaceTime with me, looking at the venue with me, because I informed her I've never worked with this venue. I don't know anything about the venue. I told her that the best thing for her is to postpone her wedding. She was already behind in payments. This is her third venue. Just a second. She paid you almost the entire $20,000. She paid it in March. <laughs> in March. Doesn't matter. She paid you almost the entire... No, 30 days the before her Just wedding. That the whole thing. not hearing. It, I'm not looking at you. <sighs> Before her wedding, she paid you almost the entire amount of the $20,000 that she originally gave you as a budget before the wedding. If you look at the contract, it says that you're going to make monthly payments so that we can adequately plan your wedding. You booked me back in 2021, almost a year before your wedding. The wedding was to be planned over the course of that year. The initial venue that I have worked with that I know is reputable, she ended up not paying the deposit on time, so they had to move forward with another date. After that, I didn't get any payments from her until March when she got her tax return. And then at that time, I was forced with less than 60 days to try to find another venue, in which I did, which was our, put, our event, put it down. event space. And then a pipe busted in that event space. And then I was forced to find another venue for her. I told her back in January, the top of the year, you need to postpone your wedding. Before invitations went out, before of all of that, when she was having troubles with her payment plan, I advised her as a professional, I think you should postpone your wedding date. You may talk a lot, but the bottom line is you're the expert. Uncross your arms. You're the, well, expert. I'm the expert. You're, I'm, you're, 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 try, you're trying to talk over me? Beginning. You're trying to talk over me? No, I'm not. Good. So you're the expert. She's out of town. The reason that she selects a wedding planner in Las Vegas is because you're supposed to know whether or not the venue that you recommend is able to take care of the party you book. You may say to her, I don't uncross. You may say to her, I don't know anything about the venue, but that's your job. You're supposed to know about the venue. When I told her in the first place that she needed to postpone her wedding, that was my professional you mean that's, advice. You, no, no, that's not what she hired you for, to tell you to postpone her wedding. She hired you to plan her wedding, not to give her advice yes, whether or not... Also are you, you're to me. trying to talk over me. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. You have to understand there are certain things that you did. Okay. You got out the invitations. That's a great thing. I assume you got a DJ. That's great. All of those things. The wedding itself, to me, was problematic. If my wedding ended with the police coming to the venue, and it turned out that the venue was one where you weren't allowed to have that kind of an event, I would be annoyed Again, at the they wedding. they were allowed oh, just to have a... a wedding. No, they weren't. The police officer... The contract the clearly wedding. states that. I don't care what it states. That's not what the police officer said. You, and you know right. you, because you have a police I don't care what it states. No, I don't care what it states. Out. You started to tell me before that the reason the police came there is because there was an altercation about you giving her another contract on that date, and there were words outside, and people People were complaining, other people who were no, in the air. That's not what I said. What did you say? The night before her wedding, I explained to her. I, I, I want to know what's happened on the date that's of the wedding. About to Just tell a second. You. Can you let me finish so I can calculate? No, I want this? you to go because I, I have a limited amount of time and I'm getting very old. I thought what you said to me, and you're going to read this back, is that the reason the police were drawn to the venue is because of the arguments outside. Correct. With her. Let's read that That's back. That's what I just, just said. A, that was on the date of the wedding. Correct. You got married. Mm-hmm. And you're happy. And you had of people course, at the wedding. Of course, got a free wedding. And you... $20,000. <gasps> you, you're almost done. Do you understand? You're almost finished. Go ahead. We were brought up on the radar because the other businesses in the vicinity where the event took place had complained. There was a lot of altercation back and forth outside of the event because she didn't agree to sign the payment plan. Okay. So the reason that you said, let's go back, 
that the police came to the venue and then shut it down because it wasn't allowed to be used for what it was used for was because there were altercations about this second contract. No, that's not the contract we were having an altercation about. That's what I'm trying to explain. Oh, just a second. On the day of the wedding, Miss Gordon, did you present her with a new contract to sign? That's either a yes, yes or a no. Yes, I did, but not for the venue. That's what I don't... I'm... It's not for the venue. I didn't say okay, it was for the venue. Yes. On, the, on the day of her wedding, did you present her with a new contract? The answer is yes. yes. You said you had discussed that with her the night before? Correct. And uncross. Oh, sorry. And the night before, did she agree to sign? Yes, she Just did. a second. A new contract? Yes, she did. Okay. And the new contract provided for what? The new contract that she was supposed to sign... Provided for what? Provided for the remainder balance of the $23,681 that her wedding actually cost. She's... Because she had only paid 19000 You have the sheet, so I don't I have the have exact number. I have Correct. So since she had only paid that amount and the total expenses for her wedding were $23,681... Okay. So the and night so before... She agreed so to make a payment plan with me to extend her payments beyond her wedding date to pay off this and remaining is that, balance. And is that what she agreed to on the phone? Is that what you're saying to Correct. me? Correct. She agreed with she you agreed on... Shh! We... She agreed on the phone to pay you the additional $3,500 or $4,000, and she agreed to pay it over time. Correct. And that was Friday night. Correct. And then she got to the wedding. Correct. And... At what point did you present her with the new contract? At what point in the event? Upon her arrival to the reception venue. Now, what happened when you got to the reception venue? You'd already gotten through the ceremony, so you're already married. What time did you get to reception? Um, so the reception was supposed to start at 5. Thanks, so it, was start, it was supposed to start at 5. But when we got there, she wasn't even done decorating. All of my family stayed outside for another hour, including my grandmother, my grandpa. We waited in cars. Shh. Okay. I said, it was supposed to start at 5. At 5. This venue that I have here someplace, you have it? I think it was supposed to start at 5.30 and end at 10.30 for the concert. Okay. Thank you. Was it supposed to start at 5.30? Yes. What happened at 5.30, Miss Gordon? I presented her with the contract, no. and then she refused to sign it. Her guests were waiting outside because she was refusing to sign it. When she refused to sign it, because our agreement was she was going to sign the agreement okay. before we started the reception. When she said that she did not want to start the reception, I responded and I said, we will pack all of this up and my staff and I will leave because now we're not being paid for our services. What time did the police arrive? I'm telling you, I would be furious if I spent $20,000 for a wedding and my evening ended by the police having my guests leave. Furious! Wedding planner Tara Gordon has accused her former clients, Beatrice Jackson and Nicholas Smith, of refusing to pay the remaining wedding balance. Beatrice and Nicholas claim Tara booked an illegal venue for their reception. So, what time did the police arrive? The police arrived at 9.30. And did the police tell everyone to leave? Yes, they did. And told everyone that they had to leave? They arrived and they told me that everyone had to leave. Whether they told you or whether yes. they told them. Yes. They said the place had to be clear. Correct. And that was an hour before the termination of the event. So at the end, the event was... The event was supposed to end at 10.30. Police arrived at 9.30. That's according to you. That's an hour short of the event time she was supposed to have at the venue. No, the event was supposed to end at 9.30. This is her um, timeline of no. events that was supposed to no. take place. No, this is the contract. That's, That's the time it. that I have the venue, too. I have to clean up. The agreed-upon timeline is here. The wedding was supposed S to end at 9.30, S giving me an hour to clean up. I'll take a look at what you have. I'm just telling you that this is the signed contract. That's it says between me and the venue, because they says, were giving me an extra hour to clean up. That doesn't say that in here. Because I booked it for a timeline. I booked it from 5.30 to 10.30. I outline everything that takes Just place. It ended at the last song of the night was at 9.30. And she went through the last song. We made it through the last song of the night on time. Could I take a look at that? I just can't wait till it's my turn. 
Well, the last song of the night was supposed to start at 9.30. Yes, and it started earlier because oh. we made it through and she was done dancing. And by the time the police came, it was just mingling and dancing going on. So she had made it through her entire <laughs> wedding reception is what I'm trying to state. Yes, Mr. Cox. Please, please. Hey, y'all, I'm back. That's not true. The police actually came at 9 o'clock and... Were you there? I was the, the DJ. DJ. You were the DJ? Yes, ma'am. Oh. That didn't get paid. Don't. Oh, he got Don't paid. He got paid. speak. So the police arrived at 9 o'clock. That's correct. And what happened when they arrived, Mr. Cox? So By the way, did you know them before the wedding? No, ma'am. Did you know her before the wedding? Just conversation that we had via Facebook or telephone. No, he did not I, know I, me. So, no. Prior Just, to I'm, not spe I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to him. She booked your services. Yes, ma'am. And how much were your services for the night? My DJing services were 500. Were you paid? No, ma'am. What happened when the police arrived? The police came, asked everyone to leave. Do you know anything about this venue space where the wedding took place? Yes, ma'am. Tell me about it. It's a storefront. So are a lot of venues in Las Vegas. Your case is dismissed. Do you understand? This is not a free for all. As far as I'm concerned, you got almost exactly what her budget called for. And I have one vendor that wasn't paid. Because she didn't pay. It's clear. Well, how do I know that you paid the other vendors? At least I know one vendor that you didn't pay. And she it's paid right almost $20,000. They got paid because... She... <laughs> OK. I have two things. I have one vendor that's here that wasn't paid. You were paid almost $20,000. The balance, part of it, is for your fee. Part of it that is my for... fee was not... <sighs> Are you saying that part of this money that you're suing for, this $4,000, was not part of your fee? The $4,000 that I'm suing for is part of my fee. Of course, that's what I said. So part of that money was for your fee, and part of it was for vendors. I have one vendor here who says he wasn't paid. Well, I have receipts from other vendors, if you like to see. No, I just... I know you had a lot of vendors, but you didn't pay him. He's the only I didn't pay him body. because she didn't pay me. <laughs> it's clear. Well, yeah. She didn't pay me enough money ahead, to pay her venue. I just saw... I have here proof of how much every item in her wedding cost, which exceeded the $19,000 that she paid. Clearly, she owes more money. It's... That's the facts of the matter. She owes more money to She's what her wedding She's countersuing you for ruining her wedding because you booked it at a venue that wasn't allowed to have a wedding. She's right. got a counterclaim for far more than your claim. Bottom line is, she picked a wedding planner, she picked a venue, she tacitly approved this change of venue, both of you had, had to at the last minute, but you did that relying on the wedding planner to find a venue that was capable to hold the event. And it wasn't. It wasn't. That's your job. Your job is to find an appropriate place so that the police don't raid a wedding a half hour before it's over. That's not the way a wedding is supposed to end. So what I want you to tell me is you're suing her for $4,300. How much of that $4,300 is your fee? $2,000. And you didn't pay him? No. So that's 23, 24 minus 500. You didn't pay him because you have to pay him. I pay him. Part well, of it was paid. to pay him. I'm deducting it. Okay. I'm not paying you for your fee. Okay. You booked the wrong space for your fee. So far, I have 1825. Other than the DJ, who else didn't you pay? I'm very clear. Can I? Other than the DJ, he's going to tell me. The DJ is going to tell me. Other than the DJ, who else didn't you pay? Mr. Cox, could you stand up, please? <laughs> you seem to want to tell me something. And since you didn't know either one of these parties, I'm going to let you tell me. Do you know any other vendor other than you? who wasn't paid. The bartender also was not paid. Bartender. That's correct. Which is his wife. That's correct. I don't care if it was his wife or not. It was the bartender. Right, but what I'm saying the was the bar was Just included. How much were you supposed to pay the bartender? The bar and the bartender came with him. He offered to do the bar mm. and to DJ because his pipe busted. Mm. So what I'm saying is, he said, I'll bring my bar and I'll do a cash bar, mm. meaning oh, that... that's because a bar you can't have for $500. So right, we'll do a was cash bar. A cash... Mm. Correct. Did you do a cash bar? Is yes, that... ma'am, I did. Okay. So you made some money off the cash bar. Yes, ma'am. Yes, of course. Mm. Got it. Now you can sit. So what you paid him was five hundred dollars for both, and one fifty for the bar. Six fifty total. That's what he charged them outside of 
the wedding. This is a very easy case for me. You were paid almost $20,000. I wasn't paid anything. I was yes. paid $2,000. And I would feel doubly furious if on the day of my wedding, as a new bride of an hour, the event planner said to me, you can't go in unless you sign this contract modifying our first contract. The contract was I, not I, to modify Your case is dismissed. Contract. We're done. Okay. This court is adjourned. So you can to claim. There are some things that I realized that, you know, I could have done better. Basically, 10 days before the wedding, add additional $4,000 on top of $20,000. That never happened. It was just her way of just trying to come up on more money, in my opinion. At the end of the day, she had got her wedding. I'm actually sometimes surprised at professionals like this woman, who is an event planner, has a reputation. She was almost fully compensated for this event. And the wedding was, if it were my wedding, I would say, you know, it's ruined by having a police shut it down. <laughs> we had a wedding a month ago. Mm -hmm. What would you think of the police shut? You would not be happy if you paid any amount of money to a professional and had that happen. I really thought it was outrageous. The whole thing was just tacky, waiting outside the venue when she got there from the ceremony, and before she could go in, yeah. she had to sign the contract. That's really not what you do as a professional. Bad business. Bad business. You rent a room to the defendant. He says that he's not going to follow house rules anymore. You were royally miffed. So we get into this altercation and we're like wrestling. Traumatic injury of the head, blunt trauma of the neck. And he puts me into a chokehold and I black out. This is Judy Justice. Armando Rodriguez is suing his former tenant, Samuel Gastelum, for an assault. Court come to order, all rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case number 2035, Rodriguez versus Gastelum. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. What kind of a premises do you live in, sir? It's a four bedroom house. And I see here that you rent out some of the rooms in order to assist with your mortgage. That's correct. How many rooms do you rent out? Three. And who lives in the other? Right now it's Kathleen Meister, and then I have two other roommates. And you use one room? Correct. When did you rent a room to the defendant? It was January 22. And what was the rent that you were charging him? Seven fifty a month. When he came to you, did he have a dog? No. When did you move in? About late January. Give me a day. 22nd. And you moved in alone? Yes, ma'am. Paid your rent on time? Yes, ma'am. February, paid your rent on time? Yes, ma'am. Lived there alone? Yes, ma'am. What about March? Did I live there alone in March also? Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. When did you get a dog? I've had my dog. Now, when did you get a dog that you brought into the house? April 22nd, 23rd. So several months after you moved in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A hum is not an answer. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And before you moved the dog in, did you have a discussion with the plaintiff? Yes, ma'am. Just yeah. prior to moving in with the dog. And what was the discussion that you had? If it was okay if I were to bring my dog for, that I had in Alaska, since I've had him since he was about six, seven weeks. And where had he been in the last two months? Um, he was still in Alaska, staying with uh, close friends. And I flew to Seattle, shipped my truck and all my belongings to Seattle and drove here uh, from Seattle. Well, my dog, the person who was watching him, drove from Alaska to Montana and had so, gone to Montana to pick him up. So you asked Mr. Rodriguez if it was okay if you brought your dog? Yes, ma'am. And what did he say? Did he say anything else? He said, just clean now up. Now, look at me. He said, clean. Did he say anything he else said, other than. After the dog, make sure that the dogs don't fight and just take care of him. Okay. Nothing about him staying out of the house. He said he wouldn't prefer him to be around the house, but he would not, it would be okay for him to be in my room. In your room? Mm hmm. The dog stayed with me in that room a few nights, and he knew, knowingly knew about it. No, I don't want to know what he knew. I want to know what your arrangement was. So your arrangement with him, according to you, not, I haven't asked him, but according to you, is that you asked him if you could bring your dog. He said okay mm -hmm. for the dog to stay outside, but could stay in your room. He said he didn't want him in the living area. He, my dog right. could also be in the garage or in, in your room. And was everything okay in April when you brought the dog? Yeah, everything was What fine. about May? May, I was looking for a new place. I was homeless because I had spent five days in jail. Oh, I'm talking about before you went to jail, sir. 
Before uh, you went to jail, because this case is uh, about an assault, which is what the plaintiff is claiming. Plaintiff is claiming that you assaulted him in the home, mm -hmm. and that took place on April 30th. Mm -hmm. That was shortly after your dog arrived. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the dog was the reason for the altercation. A part of because the reason, but that's in how it started. February, when the dog was there, I see no evidence here that there was any difficulty. You're right. A fair right. statement? Yeah. So that the problem arose when the dog came. Now, this woman's name is Kathleen. She's interspersed in both the complaint and the answer in this case. She had a cat. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh is not an answer. Yes, ma'am. He had a cat. And it was a house cat. Yes, ma'am. Plaintiff has a dog. A few dogs. And they live in the house. Yes, they stay in the garage and in the backyard, yes. Garage and backyard, do they stay in the house? They do not go inside the house. Okay, so his dogs stay outside, and he said to you, according to you, the dogs can stay outside in the garage and in your room. Yes. In April, did your dog get out of your room or into the house? Yes. Yes, on what date? April 30th because I was allowing him inside to go to my room. On April 30th, the dog was where? In the backyard, but I was bringing him inside to come to my room. You were bringing him from outside to come into your room. Mm -hmm. I haven't asked him. He says in his papers that the dog was supposed to remain outside. You were bringing him inside to your room. Yes, ma'am. Because it is your claim here that it is an emotional support dog. Yes, ma'am. And you also had at least a couple of months where you left the dog. In Alaska. With right? people I trust. I don't care people who you trust or not. If you need an emotional support animal, the emotional support animal has to travel with you. So don't show me a certificate. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. By the way, did that certificate that you have come from a psychiatrist? Uh, no. No. Did it come from a psychologist? No. Did it come from any doctor who was treating you? It was a doctor's note, yes. Was a doctor who was treating you? Yes. Yes. Not a psychiatrist. Not a psychiatrist, no. Not a psychologist. Not a psychologist. And you took this note and you had to send it to somebody over the internet? Yes. And then they sent you a certificate? Yes, and uh, with that, ID. That's what I got. Okay, so now you're bringing the dog on April 30th from the backyard into the house and? He attempts to grab the dog. No, no, no. Is the dog on a leash? No, he's very well- Just a sec. Is the dog on a leash? No. Were you holding the dog by the collar? Yes. And now you're taking the dog from outside to inside. What did he say to you? No dogs in the house. Because that's what he had said to you before. You can have your dog, but no dogs in the house. I want to tell you something. That's what I believe. So he said no dogs in the house, and you said to him... I'm going to bring my dog into my room. But when you asked him if you could bring the dog to the house, there is no question in my mind that he said to you, bring the dog to the house, but the dog doesn't come into the house. He stayed in my room a few nights prior to I that. I don't and care. Already Listen to me. Approved. That's what the arrangement was, sir. Okay. The arrangement was not what you told me before. The arrangement was with him. Yes, you can bring the dog to the house. I will let you do that. But the dog has to stay either in the garage or outside like my dogs. Okay. And you said, in effect, screw you. I'm bringing my dog, and I'm bringing my dog into my room. In effect. You're the tenant. That was the agreement. You can have the dog, but the dog must not be in the house. That's what your landlord told you. You brought the dog from Alaska, and at the very beginning, you brought the dog into your room. Mm -hmm. When had you decided that you were going to breach the agreement with him? The very first night I went to receive my dog, he stayed at the house inside my room with me. So the very first night that you brought him, you decided to breach the agreement that he you had? He had knowingly said it was okay. Did you tell him it was okay? Never. I have texts. I'd like to see it. I have to scroll back. Scroll to wherever while. you have to scroll. Scroll yeah. down to the creation. I don't care. I have all day here. <laughs> Nobody is hungry. I'm a Still little have hungry. two more cases to do before lunch. Everybody gets a little testy, including me. I don't have the text. Hmm? I do not have the text. Yeah, good. That's what I thought. Okay. It wasn't on the 30th that the dog got loose in the house. It was sometime before that, maybe a day or so before that. On the 30th was a day, sir, that you got locked out of the house. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, yes, is Your not Honor. an answer. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and what time of the day was it that you got locked out of the house? Two o'clock, middle afternoon, late afternoon. And 
according to what I read, you went to the back of the house to let yourself into the house, and you got into an altercation with Kathleen. Absolutely, she shouldn't have put her hands on and slapped you because you were fresh. Because you wouldn't be fresh to me, right? Fresh? Fresh. That's what you say to a child. Fresh. How old are you? 65. How old are you? 25. That's fresh. Armando Rodriguez claims his former tenant, Samuel Gastelou, is responsible for damages from an assault. Samuel says he was the one assaulted and falsely arrested. Now, you got into an altercation with Kathleen. Not quite, Your Honor. Well, tell me what happened. I had been outside, I went out the garage, and I was playing a time-sensitive game on my Xbox. So I was going back to the room, and I knocked on the garage door. No one answered, knocked on it a few times, pounded. Then I went back around and knocked on the, on the siding glass door a few times, one of the few times. Finally, Kathleen comes up and answers the door. At that point, I've been out there for about 10 minutes. So I'm upset. I'm like, who locked me out? Who locked the door? She gets completely defensive. She says, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. And I'm like, I'm asking who it was because Armando and I had discussed... Because you're on a time-sensitive yes, yes, video game. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So you were on a time-sensitive yes, video game. Time How sensitive. old are you? 25 years old. OK, so now you're on a time-sensitive video game, and somebody either on purpose or accidentally locked the door, and you think it's Kathleen. No, I did not accuse anyone. I okay. just asked was who locked me out, who locked me out, because I had been locked out St earlier that week, again, did you, earlier, by Armando. Did, just a second. Did you have a key uh, for the house? On my... No, no, no. Did you have... I had a front door key, key, not to the garage door, not to the sliding door. But you had a front door key. Yes, Your Honor, but there's a gate. There's a big fence, and I didn't have a key to the gate that was locked. You couldn't get into the house yes. even with your front door key. Yes, Your Honor. Is that what you're telling yes, me? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Now, after you had a conversation with her, there was no physicality between the two of you. Not at that moment. But once Armando came around the corner, he's like, it was me who locked you out. So me and him... Sorry. Now, just a second. He said, it was me that locked you out. Mm -hmm. Did he say he did that on purpose? or was It was it an accident, is what did he said. Did he say? OK. So he said, it was me that locked you out. It was an accident. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the uh -huh, first time. It's not... Yes, Your Honor. That's yes. First, second, I've locked my children out of the house many times, sometimes on purpose. I'm not his child. By accident. I'm his roommate. It doesn't make any difference. So he said to you, it was an accident. And you said to him... It's happened before. Or, and he said to you... Those were accidents also. OK. And he said those were accidents also. Yes. And you said to I him... I said you need to be more attentive, more aware. If someone had just walked out and left the door unlocked, you should probably go and see if anyone's out there before you turn around and lock the door. And he said? He said he apologized. He OK, said, so he said, I apologize. Yes. OK, what's next? During that, that whole conversation, me and him are, are arguing. OK, but forth. at the end, he said, I'm sorry. He said, I apologize. It's not so clear cut. It's not well, it's at the end of this back and forth. You shouldn't. You should have been more careful. You should look to see who's at the door. You've done it before. I'm sorry. It was an accident. I apologize. Now I have an apologize. And In next. In the middle of that altercation, Kathleen kept butting in. She said, you don't talk to me like that. You don't talk to me like that. I said, I wasn't even talking to you. I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm talking to Armando. I said, mind your own business. She said, oh, you don't tell me what to do. You don't tell me what to do. I said, mind your own business. She said, say that to me one more time. And I said, mind your own business. She walks across the hall and she slaps me across the face. And Armando grabs her hand right after she smacks me. And instead of retaliating aggressively or any type of thing, I call the police, immediately call the police. And while we're waiting there for the police, that's when I get the apology from Armando. That's when he's like, OK, let's make a deal. Let's try to work this out before the police get there. The police get there. They ask me what had happened. And, you say, and happened. you say that this older woman slapped you because yeah, you were fresh. The face. Because you were fresh. No, because she, she shouldn't. Believes she shouldn't she, have put her hands on and slapped you because you were fresh. Fresh. Because you wouldn't be fresh to me, right? Fresh? Fresh. That's what you say to a child. Fresh. You were being fresh. And she should not have put her hands on you. Would I have called the police about that? Hmm, maybe. Except but I am not let a me, child. Let just a sec I'm not a child. I'm not related to these people. I just said to you, you were being fresh. How old are you? 65. How old are you? 25. That's fresh. That's fresh. Because first you accused her of locking you out. I didn't accuse then, her. Yeah. OK, so after she slapped you, the police arrived. They left. She said, she slapped you. Yes, we have marks. You have cuts. You have bruises. You have abrasions. No, they left. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you expect when you called the police for them to arrest her? What I did just... you want them to do, sir? Uh, was what I supposed to did you want? How was I what? supposed to retaliate? Was Just I supposed to hit her back? Just a second. No. Okay, then what was no. I supposed to do? I'm not telling you what to do. Okay. I'm just asking you, sir, did you expect them 
when you called the police to arrest Kathleen because she slapped you. No, I expected there to be consequences for her assaulting me. What? So I don't what know what did the you consequences think, so were. So what did you think that they are. should do? Whatever they feel was right. Uh, okay. Whatever is justice. Okay, now let's move on. Mm -hmm. So now the police are gone and... I go speak to Armando. I asked why he sacrificed his integrity for lying for Kathleen, for saying that she didn't slap him, because he told the police he witnessed no such event. He didn't see nothing. You know, he was standing right there, grabbed her hand. Kathleen says she didn't do it. And the police came up to me before they left. They said, they're telling me something else. I just straight up, I just don't believe you. I just like, okay, well, what else can I do? I go to Armando and I'm like, why, why would you sacrifice your integrity? Why would you lie to the police? Why would you let another roommate physically assault me and just no consequences whatsoever? And at that point is uh, when I tried to bring my dog inside and just go straight to my room. Just right? a second. So at that time, <clears throat> after this hot spot is over. It got heated again. Got, got heated again. Mm -hmm. Your reaction was childish. And you said, I'm going to get my dog mm -hmm. that I was told not to bring in the house. And I'm going to bring my dog in the house. I was going to my Just a second. I don't care if you were going to Pluto. Your reaction after this was, they can't tell me what to do. I'm going outside and I'm gonna bring my dog inside. He'll let you bring the dog to the house, but the dog can't come in the house, stays outside with his dogs. There's only one animal in the house and that's Kathleen's house cat. That's it. So you went to bring your dog from outside to in the house. Yes, Your Honor. In violation of the agreement that you had with your landlord. After the police had come, I just want you to realize what's going on. Oh, I You know, I'm, I just want you to realize that they don't actually keep me here because I'm five, six and gorgeous. I understand what happened when you were disappointed that Kathleen had slapped you like a child because you were fresh and she's not your mother, and she had no right, even your mother doesn't have a right to put their hands on you. Correct. But you got slapped, not injured, no broken jaw, no broken skin, police didn't see anything because if they did, they would have arrested somebody, and they left. And you were royally miffed. Because you got locked out of the house for which she apologized, you missed your time-sensitive video game. Now, I'm not sure what that is, because I'm not a 25-year-old idiot that plays video games during the day. Mondo Rodriguez is accusing his former roommate, Samuel Gastelum, of breaking their rental agreement and assaulting him. Samuel claims he was falsely arrested after Armando lied to the police. Now, several things that happened that day. Day, right? You got locked out and you were playing a time sensitive video game. Yes, Your Honor. And because you got locked out of the house for which he apologized, you missed your time sensitive video game. Now, I'm not sure what that is because I'm not a 25 year old idiot that plays video games during the day. <laughs> when I was 25 years old, I actually worked. Mm. I did, I actually worked. I know that may seem foreign to you, but I did actually work. And so after all of this altercation took place, you said, now I'm going to show him. Now I'm going to bring my dog into the house. And then there was another altercation. Second yes. one. Yes. That's the one we're talking about. By the way, maybe I'm being terribly unkind to you, sir. How do you support yourself? I work. For whom? Pretty foreign, I know. For whom? I'm a cultivator. You work five days a week? Yes, Your Honor. And in my free time, what do you I, cultivate? I like to play video what do you games. Cu what do you cultivate? Marijuana, cannabis. How long have you worked for them? Since March, so about five months. Prior to that, you were in Alaska. Prior to January, I was in Alaska. And before March, before getting the job at the cultivation facility for cannabis, I was uh, helping my uncles do concrete. So working isn't very foreign to me, as you might see. Prior to March, you were working with your uncles in concrete. Yes, Where? Your Honor, in Victorville, in California. You were working, I, I have... you were working for your uncle prior to March, getting a job as a cultivator. And what I want to know is, how long had you been separated from your emotional support dog? I spent four months away from him. And those four months were from January 
to April. For January, job. February, March, April. And what were you doing in Alaska? I was born and raised no, no. in Alaska. No, no. Alaska was... is not a born and That's not a job, sir. What were you doing in Alaska? I was, for the last six months of my time in Alaska, I was a bud tender. Okay. Tell me what happened after the dog incident. Well, the dog comes in. He says that he's not going to follow house rules anymore. And he says, as of right now, he's going to do what he wants to do. So he just gets the dog from the backyard and he, he comes inside the house. And I feel that it's my responsibility to enforce the house rules. So I physically grab his dog and I move the dog from inside the house to the backyard. That happens once. He gets the dog and then he physically puts him back in the house. Where in the house? This is, you could say, the kitchen area. So now I basically attempt to repeat what I did the first time. So I physically grab the dog a second time and I'm now physically taking him out, at which point he gets from behind me and he puts me into a chokehold and I black out. I come to, I look for my phone, I find my phone, dial 911, police show up like in maybe two or three minutes and I'm still trying to get... get... And that's the assault that you are referring to yes, today. Did the EMS check you out? And I was taken to the hospital. May I see the report? Yeah, I got a report and then I have the bills associated with okay. them. With... Was Kathleen a witness to this? She saw... She saw. No, like... don't tell me what she saw. Was she a witness to any part of that? Yeah. The yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Would you step up, please? Tell me at what point you came in on this altercation. When they were arguing about the dog. The first time or the second time? Well, you don't know whether... Uh, I don't really know. Were you a witness to any of the physical confrontation that resulted in Mr. Rodriguez going to the hospital? I knew that they... Don't tell me what you knew. Okay. What uh, you saw. Okay, what I saw was Armando trying to put the dog back outside, because he's a big pit bull, right? And then he would put him out, and then um, Samuel would bring him back in. And then the last time, Armando was putting him back outside, and Samuel came behind Armando. And what I did was I left and went and called the police, because I was afraid he was going to get hurt. All right, sir. Now tell me your version of those events. Could I show her statement from the previous court? No, I want you to first tell me your version of the events. So I let Apollo inside. My dog's name is Apollo. And he's going to grab Apollo to let him out. And we're both kind of grabbing Apollo, pulling him, trying to... We're both kind of fighting over him a little bit. As I'm pulling him inside more, Armando uh, starts grabbing me. And so we get into this altercation and we're like wrestling back and he's forth. He's just a second. He's trying to get your pit bull outside and at the same time he's grabbing you? Is that the... No, it was... For, we were both grabbing the dog. So you and were trying to keep the dog inside and he was trying to I put the dog outside? I was trying to take him to my room, yes. Take him. You were trying to take him to your room. He was trying to put him outside. Yes, And? Sir. As we're both kind of fighting for the dog, he grabs me. He lets go of the dog and then grabs me. How did he grab you? He grabs me by the arm, and then he, like, starts uh, tugging a little bit. And so we're wrestling. We just start wrestling, and it gets a little bit more violent. And I go to restrain him, and he's, uh, he's hitting me. He's getting, hitting me from the, uh, with his arms. He's trying to scratch me. And I just restrained him until I felt not threatened no more. I released him. I get up. I grab my dog. I go to the room. I call the police. Mm -hmm. Do you have your medical records that day? They would not take me. They didn't... Not, take not me. they would not take you. Do you have your medical records for that day? I have my arrest report that says, apparently, they didn't... May I see take the pictures. arrest report, please? They, would, they refuse to take pictures. Don't tell me what they didn't do. I can read. <sighs> do you have medical insurance, sir? No. None. Okay, so you had an emergency room CT scan that was $8,640.62. The other bill for that day was for radiology, which was... $518. This is the emergency room, which was $1,109. Okay, well, that takes us over this court's limit jurisdictionally. Now, you, sir, subsequently had a hearing with regard to this case. Is that correct? Yes. Did you testify, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Did you testify, sir? I did. At the end of that hearing, was there a restraining order granted or not? It was granted. For how long? Do you have a copy of that? I have a copy. It was a year. So a judge, like me, probably not as good looking, <laughs> after hearing, so I don't have to hear it, all of the evidence, the judge found that there was more evidence than not 
that you assaulted the plaintiff and granted the plaintiff an order of protection for one year. After that happened, you were still in the house. After the assault or after the hearing? After the assault. After the assault, I was arrested and... And then you came back to the house. Yes, Your Honor. That's what I asked. You were still in the house, but you're no longer in the house. No. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $10,000. We're finished here. Thank Thank you. you. This court is adjourned. He's a liar, and I I told the truth, and I won the case. I didn't aggressively attack him. That was the rules that I I had set. My dogs don't even come in the house. I defended myself and my dog. I think there was some genuine confusion on the defendant's behalf about the term fresh. When I said to him, you were were fresh to an older person. Exactly. You know, he had a little bit of an attitude, a little young gun attitude, and the older woman did not appreciate it. So I am very familiar with the term fresh, but I think he was a little confused. But 100% fits the definition of fresh. It was interesting. The other thing was I didn't seem appalled at the fact that he was doing time-sensitive video games because <laughs> I actually understand that from some of our... Yeah, Grandchildren. they take the games very seriously. Very seriously. And I could see how missing out on a time-sensitive game could raise an even heated moment even hotter. So. Especially someone who needs an emotional support <laughs> pit bull.